Hey guys, thanks for being interested in watching my video. Um, we have been working through the major arcana and today we're going to be covering the second number two of the tarot arcana, which is the high priestess. Um, <clears throat> she, ah, number two is the balance. She sits between two pillars. She's the most intuitive of all of the archetypes. And, you know, I talk a lot about the practice of awareness, being aware at all times of how you're feeling. She, or this card, kind of embodies awareness. She's the most self-aware. She is the personification of intuition and inner wisdom. Um, and it's also important to remember that with all of these arcana, we are basically separating ourselves from them to look at it, right? You've got to bring it out here to inspect it, but you can't forget that it's in here within you because if you if you separate it and then you separate it too much then it's over there then it's that once you point to it it severs that connection and you think of the high priestess as something other than yourself she is within you she is <laughs> okay. She is like the first major arcana that you really even encounter, that you you become aware of, that you meet, because she is the awareness, right? The the inner she's the inner voice. And one of the things I was thinking of too is to even reach this state, the first step is healing our guts. And with this whole global awakening, it's one of the first things that people are waking up to that, you know, Big Brother or the huge corporations are basically poisoning us with the food, the processed foods, the high fructose corn syrup, and you know, even beyond foods, and you get into like cleaning products and the chemicals that we are being exposed to. Um, all of this is having effect on our bodies, which is keeping us from really being able to have that intuition, to have that gut feeling is what we call it, to trust your guts. Let me see if I can wait for this. Whatever they're grinding. Even if you're not really even interested in, you know, being a magician or going deep down the rabbit hole of being a servant to the divine. You just want to be happy and healthy, right? This is still important to do, is to heal your diet and get away from all the chemicals that is keeping us from this wholesome state with our bodies. Um... <clears throat> Oh my God, Jesus. Should I just talk over it? Right 
Yeah, I apologize for the background noise. Construction. Costa Rica is becoming Hollywood. <laughs> so anyway. Um, the high priestess is sitting on her throne. The throne is the symbol of being grounded. You have the four legs of the throne. You also have your two feet. So you actually have six points symbolically. When you're sitting on a throne, you're stable. You are not moving. You are able to hold your ground. You're grounded. The two pillars, one is black and one is white. Oh my God. So many, so much symbolism. <laughs> You've got yin and yang. You've got masculine and feminine. You've got positive and negative. You've got light and dark. It's just the symbol of duality and she sits in the middle holding, kind of, theoretically, these two pillars. She also has a crown. Um, and she's connected with Isis, which, if you look at her crown, it's the, you can, it's a couple of ways of reading it. You can either read the moon, like the crescent moon, and then the full moon in the middle. You can also read it as the horns of Taurus with the sun in the middle which is also, depending on how deep you want to go, Hathor, which predates kind of fluidly Isis, maybe the mother of, but she kind of becomes and is, um, and she wears that crown. But you can also see Isis wearing that crown. The other crown that you will see Isis wearing is actually a throne. On her head so she's sitting on a throne and she has a throne as a crown a lot of symbolism there now she also because she sits between these pillars she's the guardian of this gate this is a gate this is a portal if you want to pass through this gate you have to talk to her she is within you and you have to be able to awaken that inner voice, that intuition and that awareness of knowing yourself. And the first question she asks to pass through this gate, this portal is do you have the keys to understand the book? Are you able to understand the symbolism to read this book? She's also holding the book. The book. <laughs> Books! I love the symbolism of books. Anyway, what's through the portal? What, I mean, what, what is even on the other side? Why do you even want to pass? They're called the halls of wisdom. You were able to possess inner wisdom. We already possess this wisdom. It just has to be awakened. You have to pass through the door or the gate or the portal, whichever word you want to use. So through this inner voice and listening and being able to hear this inner voice, you are gaining divine wisdom. You're gaining that connection with wisdom, universal wisdom, universal truths, all of those, all of those hashtags. 
Um, so let's get to the cards and see if the High Priestess shows up. <laughs> Shuffling and I'm thinking of the number two and I'm thinking of the High Priestess and all of everything that I just said. And I throw down my center, north, south, east, west. And when I flip the center, I got nine of hearts, which is nine of cups, which is nine is the completion number. It's the last of the single digits. It is the completion and hearts our cups, our water, our emotions. So this nine of hearts in the center, I thought of being on the edge of death and rebirth, which is at that gate. You are at the gate, which actually I talked about this with, this guy showed up with the magician too, I think. Um, you're at the edge of a gate. You're right there. You're at nine, not 10, but nine. And then I had the vision of being at the top of a mountain. And I really saw the high priestess on her throne at the top of the mountain. And I thought to myself, you know, to reach her, you have to climb that mountain to reach the top, to reach this number nine. So in the north, we have seven of hearts. And the first thing I thought was, oh, the hearts, the hearts. And seven is that mystery number. It is the mirror number. It is the seven chakras that mirrors the seven planets. with emotions in the north, the placement. And I really felt like it was basically saying what I had just written about understanding that the high priestess is not just outside of you. To study the planets is to understand yourself and your inner essence and that they're inseparable. You can kind of pull it out to inspect it, but understanding that it is also within you. Seven of Hearts is also, um, well, seven is Venus. I thought of Venus, of course, the high priestess and Venus. She is Venus, right? <laughs> She's the glory. Um, she's dreams. Seven of hearts is the um, daydreaming and, and wishes and you know, you aspire to see her. Um, and it's also making emotional choices. How far do you want to go? Do you want to pass through that gate? <laughs> and then I wrote down, I was thinking, you know, all the choices that we have to make at the grocery store because I was thinking about the food situation and, oh, and to buy it or not to buy it. Not only do we have to look for all of the chemicals and the, is it processed or not? Now we have to figure out if, you know, the plastic, and do we really want to bring that plastic bottle home and then have to worry about disposing of it with the recycling crisis and, oh, everything. So, <laughs> the choices. All up in the air, all up in their head, all of this is in the north. So what's in the south? And I've got eight of wands. And instantly, that eight, oh, I see that eight, I feel that movement, that 
infinity, that racetrack, you think of fast movement and you think of fire, wands, clubs, fire. And I see it in the south. And I'm like, awaken that kundalini, baby. Get those snakes moving. Light that fire under your ass to pass through the door. So what do we have in the East? And we have Jack of Hearts, another heart, all of these hearts. And there is our Jack, our child, our fool, our emotional fool, our emo kid. And he's been in this position. I love him in this position. He's coming up over the mountain with the sunrise to squash his enemies. And I thought of, you know, all what I have now in my own inner dialogue, I call them all coma kids, whether they show up or not. The, the kids, inner kids, you don't have to be a child, but to have that inner child really strong in you and to have all of the sensitive emotions to be able to feel the planets and feel the earth and feel all of the shit that's going on in the world. I know it's really, really hard because we feel it so deeply, but we are the heroes of the story. And I just see all of these crazy kids, the nerds, the super intelligent, smart, weird, interesting, unique savants screaming with their clubs and their computers and their virus attacks and oh my god anonymous <laughs> take over the internet world anonymous defend our mother because we feel our mother we're not one of the numb ones we feel it so we will defend her and what's in the west and I've got nine of wands, another wand, another fire. We've got that number nine, and I see the two nines together as well. And I see that completion of the fire, being able to wield fire, being able to wield that wand like a flow art pro. Um, strength, having that strength to do what we need to do. <clears throat> I thought of a little song. We are, we are, strength of the nation. And I know that's not the words, but it came to me and it was really cute and funny. With the, the youth, you know? And we have the strength. And I re I'm looking at the spread, I'm wrapping it up and just kind of letting it sink in. And I see that we've got seven, eight, and nine. We've got two nines side by side. And you know, the high priestess didn't show up, the card didn't show up, but she was there in that center card. I really felt her on top of that mountain, um, on top of that nine of hearts, um, that completion sitting on her throne. Yeah. So I really enjoyed that spread and that <laughs> radical. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me down this rabbit hole and hopefully you will join me in all the others. Please like and subscribe. Um, it'd be awesome if you wrote some comments, if you're called to do so. 
I'm really excited to, I'm kind of intimidated because it's like, oh my God, how am I going to keep up with all of these <clears throat> comments? But I'm also excited to hear your voice, you know, even though it's not auditorial, you know, I'm reading your voices. Um, so I'm really excited, even for the bad stuff. I really want to laugh at some like negative comments because <laughs> I also know that if you get a negative comment, you get some positive comments. So anyway, don't forget about the surprise link in the description below and check out my link tree. It's got all of my other links and my spiritual text, hashtag Mystic Eve. Actually last night, I just went over the last reading of the third journal. Um, which I'm really proud of. It's got some cool shit. So that's going to be published soon. So check it out. Thank you so much. And love and light. Ciao.